Welcome to Beyond the Ridge, Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center's web series where we're exploring the areas of race, religion, medicine, and war from the 19th century and beyond. My name is Pete Mealy. I'm Executive Director of Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center, and I want to take you back to a really exciting day in Gettysburg history, December 16, 1858. And on that day, between eight and 10,000 people come to town, a town that at the time only has about 2,400 people living here, and that is to celebrate Gettysburg's attachment with the rest of the world through this very important artery, the Gettysburg Railroad, which opens on December 16th, 1858. This rail line goes between Gettysburg here and Hanover, about 12 miles to the east, where it connects with the Hanover Railroad, the Northern Central Railroad and Hanover Junction and out to the rest of the world, Harrisburg and to Baltimore. So this is really exciting, a town that had been only attached to the rest of the world through roadways and through carriages and walking and horses now gets a rail line. Behind me, you'll see the 1858 Gettysburg Railroad Station, which during the Battle of Gettysburg is going to become a hospital for John Buford's men and some of the men of the 1st Division of the 1st Corps during the fighting on July 1st, 1863. And this entire area where we're standing is eventually going to become a depot where they're going to be shipping wounded men out to larger cities like Baltimore and Philadelphia and also bringing in medical supplies and food in the aftermath of the battle for months after the battle. But in the days leading up to the battle, this artery becomes vitally important because this is how people from Gettysburg are sending their personal belongings, money, stores out of town in the face of the oncoming Confederates. Fanny Bueller, who lives here in Gettysburg, said the banks sent away their money. The stores were closed. Merchandise was shipped away. Individuals chartered cars in which were packed household goods, and she means rail cars, household goods and valuables of all kinds, and the cars sent to some distant part of the North for safety. The first Confederate troops are going to come into Gettysburg on June 26th, 1863. The men of Jubal Early's division come through Gettysburg, stay here overnight the night of June 26th to June 27th, and they're going to spend time destroying the rail line into Gettysburg, cutting off Gettysburg from the rest of the world. About half a mile east of where I'm standing right now is a rail bridge over, the, over Rock Creek. Jubal Early's men are going to light boxcars on fire and roll them down over the bridge, effectively destroying it. As Jubal Early's men leave here the next morning, the morning of June 27th, and march east towards York, the cavalry that's with Early is going to tear up the, the railroad, destroy more bridges on the way, their way uh, to the Susquehanna River. So by the time of the Battle of Gettysburg, this railroad has been torn up and Gettysburg is cut off by the rest of the world. But during the battle, a man is going to be dispatched from Washington, D.C., upon whose shoulders rests the repair of this vital artery. This man is Herman Haupt. He's one of those guys that I love to talk about one of those guys that is not a battlefield commander, but is very, very crucial to the war effort. And Herman Haupt had lived in Gettysburg before the battle. He's a West Point graduate from the United States Military Academy, becomes a railroad engineer, uh, very, very interested in railroad bridges. And in the 1840s, 1830s, he is going to move here to Gettysburg and help to uh, to, to survey something called the Tapeworm Railroad, a railroad that was supposed to be uh, west of town. But he's also going to become a professor at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania College, today known as Gettysburg College. And he's going to open up a select academy up on Oak Ridge, the Oak Ridge Select Academy, not too far from where the seminary is today. He's also very, very influential in the the uh, design and the surveying of the Pennsylvania Railroad. So you could not think of a better man for the job to help repair this railroad in the aftermath of the battle. And Herman Haupt is going to travel quite possibly the furthest distance during the battle of any one 
man. He's down in Washington, D.C. at the end of June 1863 as the Confederates are invading Pennsylvania. And he's sitting there and he's really, he wants to be where the action is, but he's told to wait. And then finally, finally, on June 30th, he is sent to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, about 30 miles north of here, where he is going to confer with the governor of Pennsylvania, Andrew Curtin, Thomas Scott, a uh, big railroad guy up with the Pennsylvania Railroad. This is what he's going to learn that the Confederates are pulling back from Carlisle, just outside Harrisburg, and concentrating somewhere in south central Pennsylvania. From there, Herman Haupt is going to travel to Baltimore, and he's going to get started on repairing the Western Maryland Railroad and getting that ready to bring in supplies and bring out wounded soldiers. The Western Maryland Railroad is one rickety track. You can't get trains past each other. Uh, it doesn't have any place to turn trains around, but this is going to be the first railroad that helped gets ready to bring wounded soldiers out of Gettysburg. It's going to be, the railhead is about 30 miles south of Gettysburg, so it's only a Band-Aid uh, until they can get the tracks further closer to Gettysburg fixed. After he repairs the Western Maryland Railroad and gets 15 trains a day running on it, he's going to move up to the Littlestown branch, just about seven miles from here. He's going to repair that branch. They're going to bring Dan Sickles out on the Littlestown branch. And then he's going to move up here towards Gettysburg. <clears throat> he is going to come here to Gettysburg over a couple of days. He's going to be here by July 5th. He's going to be repairing bridges with a, with a work crew as he comes, but he's only able to repair the railroad up to the Rock Creek Bridge where the Confederates had run the railroad, burning railroad cars over. So the train can't make it back here yet. They can only make it to the outskirts of town. And this is where the first supplies are going to be dropped off. Uh, this is where the first wounded soldiers are going to be gathered to be to be escorted, to be taken out of town towards York and to Baltimore, larger cities where they other hospitals. <clears throat> Medical inspectors are going to show up in the immediate aftermath of the battle, and it's going to be their job to start to move these soldiers, these wounded soldiers out. <clears throat> A man named Edward Vellum. One of those medical inspectors says every train of wounded was placed in charge of a medical officer. Instruments, dressing, stimulants, etc. were furnished him. Each car was filled with a sufficient quantity of hay and on the longer routes, water coolers, tin cups, bedpans, and urinals. By July 22nd, so little more than three weeks after the battle, the first shots of the battle, 15,000 wounded soldiers, over 15,000 wounded soldiers, are going to be evacuated on this rail line, thanks to the diligence of Herman Haupt and the medical inspectors that come here. Herman Haupt had left Gettysburg, and when he leaves, everything sort of falls apart. He has to come back here, and he has to get the railroads running again. He has to get the, the, the schedules running. And it's only, th again, through his diligence here that he is able to get these, these 15,000 wounded soldiers out by July 22nd. Over the next few months until November, they're going to be taking wounded soldiers out, and they're going to be bringing supplies in. And then on November 19th, this rail line is going to play another very, very important role in Gettysburg history because it's going to be how Abraham Lincoln is going to come into town to deliver the Gettysburg Address at the Soldiers National Cemetery. He's going to come up this line. He is going to disembark at the rail station and walk a block up towards David Will's house where he's going to spend the night next day, November 19th, giving the Gettysburg address, and then he's going to leave by the same route. Passenger service continues on this rail line until 1948. Uh, the, the station behind me is renovated in the mid-2000s. Uh, it had been kind of fallen into disrepair, uh, but it's renovated and is, is open on occasion right now. And I want you to think as we wrap up here, keep, keep in mind the, the, what I call the other stuff of battle. 
You know, we talk a lot about what's going on on the field. We talk about troop movements. We talk about the decisions that these generals are making. But one thing to really remember is what is going on behind the scenes. Men like Herman Hout and Edward Vellum, Jonathan Letterman, the medical director of the Army of the Potomac, are performing really, really important and crucial tasks to making sure, sure that the armies function, that men are cared for. And that's something that we always have to remember when we think about the Civil War. I want to thank you for joining us for today's Beyond the Ridge web series, where we're looking at the areas of race, religion, medicine, and war from the 19th century and beyond. My name again is Pete Mealy. I'm Executive Director of Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center, and we hope to see you on the Ridge soon.